Good morning, everybody. It's Michael. Today, I'm going to demonstrate the differences between using no filter, a CPL, a variable ND, and a solid ND. By the end of this video, you will know the strengths and weaknesses of each of them and also understand the limits of when you should not use a VND, as well as why pros in Hollywood do not use them. And I just want to demonstrate this in such a way that you can repeat it. I'm obviously out here looking at this water in the sky. Right now, I don't have any filter on my lens. It's just a plain lens. I'm shooting on the R5, 24 to 105, and you can see that it's a little bit overexposed. So I'm trying to maintain my 180 degree shutter rule, which means if you're shooting at a frame rate of 30 frames per second, you want a shutter speed of about 1 60th of a second. My ISO is turned down to ISO 100. And if I'm shooting at F4, it's way overexposed. So the common thing for beginning videographers to do in the situation is to stop their aperture down. And here I am at about F18. So now that I've stopped the aperture down, it seems to be more evenly exposed. And this is how beginners often start without filters. What I'm going to do is pan across the sky because I want to demonstrate some very important things about the differences of these filters. Keep your eyes on the sky. Keep your eyes on the water. This is no filter. I'm just panning. And you'll notice the sky more or less has a very even color until I get closer to the direction of the sun where it's all washed out. Look at the water. The water is also more or less consistent. This is what you can expect when you stop your aperture down to f18. I don't recommend this because we get a deeper depth of field and we also lose sharpness. But if you have nothing else, this is how you would do it. You would stop your aperture down. Next, I'm going to demonstrate how a circular polarizer can be used very effectively and also some limitations. The camera is obviously overexposed. I've pre-exposed it because when you put a CPO on, we lose anywhere from one to one and a half stops of light. One of the limits of CPLs is that it works best when we are shooting perpendicular to the axis of our light source. So if I'm shooting into the sun or away from the sun, we're not going to see these effects as strongly. But when we shoot perpendicular to the sun axis, this is what it looks like without a CPL. This is what it looks like with a circular polarizer. Now what I'm going to do is to rotate the circular polarizer and I want you to watch the sky and water to see the effect happening in real time. Circular polarizers block polarized light from entering the lens. It's not a natural effect we can see with our eye, but we can now see through the water here. Whereas if we continue to rotate it, we get this glare. So circular polarizers are amazing to reduce glare and also take a look at the sky as I rotate the CPL. Watch what happens overexposed and I'm rotating it. And now we get this gorgeous, lush blue look. The physics of how CPLs work is fascinating and I will cover it in another lesson. But suffice it to say, if you do landscape work, video or photo, circular polarizers are very powerful to get contrast, limit glare, but there's a limit in that they cannot be color neutral. If they were color neutral, as I'm rotating the filter, the sky would stay the same color. So it's impossible to have a truly color neutral CPL. And you're also starting to see this halo effect here in the sky. And I'm going to take the camera and pan it. And you can see that the halo is staying over here as I point the camera directly away from the sun. And now it's too bright. I'd have to stop the aperture down to get that look again. But if I leave it locked down and I pan from one direction to another, you can see this artifact here which is one of the artifacts of shooting with a polarizer. As I continue to rotate it, now it's bright. And this is because we're looking into the sun. The CPL doesn't work as well. It doesn't have the same strength when we're shooting perpendicular. CPLs are most effective when we're shooting perpendicular to the sun. And we rotate according to the reflections that we're seeing off our subject matter. CPLs cannot be color neutral because of this principle. In this next example, I'm going to show you a variable ND filter. That name is a little misleading because it's not really an ND filter. VNDs are really dual polarizers. So it's two polarizers stacked on top of each other. And by rotating their orientation to one another, we can control the amount of light entering the camera. 
Now, because they are two polarizers working in tandem, VNDs, or variable NDs, cannot be color neutral by rule. It's an impossible thing in regards to physics. I think it's misleading to call them VNDs, but I wanted to demonstrate this so you can see this and you can repeat this test on your own if you have a VND. I'm at F16, I'm gonna come down to F4. I have a three stop VND and I'm gonna put it on the lens. And what I'm going to do is just thread it in. I'm not changing the intensity of filtration. I want you to take a look specifically at the sky in the water as I'm doing this. As I'm rotating this variable ND, I'm just connecting it to the camera. Look at the changes that are happening to the colors of the sky. It was desaturated, now it's saturated. There's some glare, now there's less glare. I'm just threading it onto the camera. Now it's desaturated, now it's saturated, now it's blue. Continuing to thread it on until I get to the end, then it's locked down. So just in the process of connecting a VND to a camera, you can see the changes in the water and in the color of the sky. This is the easiest thing that you can do to see that variable NDs are not color neutral and they are going to have an effect on your subject matter, not just the sky and water, depending on how the threads are machined and as we're rotating it onto our camera. To make this worse is if I were to pan to the left or right, again, we get this effect that we see with circular polarizers. The effect is stronger over here than it is over here, right? Because circular polarizers filter out light based on reflective surfaces. To make this even more complicated, let's say I wanted to increase the filtration. So I'm gonna rotate my variable ND to five stops. And as I rotate this, you can see the colors are changing. I'll put my ISO to compensate, but the color of this at a stop of five is very different than the color of this at a stop of three. And again, this comes back to the fact that we're using dual polarizers, right? So the polarizers are changing the color of our subject matter as we adjust them. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because so many of my students and customers have asked me, why are you not making a variable ND as part of the Maven filter line? And this is the reason. Variable NDs are sold and marketed without the explanation or training of how they work and what their limits are. So people are just going out and they're adjusting them and they're shooting and they have absolutely no idea that they're changing the color in the reflective properties of their subject matter and they're not even aware of it. The proper way to use a VND is to shoot with the threads loosely, depending on the exposure. So if I stay at F5 and I loosen the filter up, I bump up my ISO and I'm looking for that blue pop, it would be more in here but it's not threaded onto the camera tightly. I have to rotate the base of the VND to get the color that I want. This is the reason why variable NDs are wacky. I do not recommend them. And I have several in my camera bag. I have used them professionally. I just do not recommend them as one of the first tools you should look at. They should be the last tool because of this wackiness, especially if you're doing professional work. Here we're popping on a three-stop Maven Magnetic and you'll notice that the color between the sky and the water is very similar. It's more consistent with what you saw without a filter. A good quality solid ND can be, and it should be, color neutral because it does not use polarizing physics to remove glare or different types of scattered light. So if I pan to the left or right, you can see some more consistency between the sky and the water. And the reason is, there's no polarizing effect. Obviously it gets more bright as it gets to the sun, but this is why Hollywood cinematographers, high-end professionals almost always use a high-grade solid ND when they are shooting video because the results are predictable and we do not get these effects of a CPL or a double CPL like in a VND. Now there is a time and place for VNDs if you're doing run and gun videography with rapidly changing exposure conditions. I get it. There's, it's a very tricky situation. I don't know of any Hollywood cinematographers who would prefer a variable ND over a solid ND because of this color consistency. It's also why we do not see VNDs built into professional video cameras. That said, I do know there are times where it's more convenient to use them. I own several. I have used them in situations later to my regret 
So in every case possible, I try to use a solid ND now. One last problem with VNDs is they tend to be very expensive if you're looking for a high quality one, anywhere from 200 to 250 to $300 for one. If you get a two to five and a five to nine, now you're looking at over 500, sometimes even more dollars. And at the time of this recording, I'm proud to say I have a complete set of high quality magnetic tier one color performance ND filters. It also comes with a CPL and UV splash guard. These are magnetic, so you don't need to thread them for the price of about one good quality VND. Check the link in the description. I look forward to making more filter videos to demonstrate the physics of how they work and how you can use them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.